Hello everyone, my name is Ryan or MNR Productions and welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars UCS Y-Wing Starfighter. This is set number 75181, it's recommended for ages 14 and up, and it includes 1,967 pieces. A $200 retail price in the United States is typical for these kind of sets, and this one does not deviate from that at all. You're going to find this one for $200 in the US. It includes two minifigures, an astromech droid called R2BHD, and of course a gold leader rebel Y-Wing pilot. We will take a look at the instruction manual at the back end of this review, but the box features the Y-Wing in the Death Star Trench, followed by a couple of TIE Fighters, and you can even see the Millennium Falcon in the background there. It features the same style box art as the most recent UCS set besides the Y-Wing, being the UCS Millennium Falcon from late 2017. I thought that was going to be a one-off type of box art, but LEGO has kept that UCS style box art, and I really do enjoy it. On the back side of the box, it shows off all the features in the set, as well as the Y-Wing inside of a hangar. This is the second UCS Y-Wing LEGO has released. The previous version was released back in 2004 for $120. It included quite a few less pieces and no minifigs, so this one is quite an upgrade. It did use a slightly different color scheme. It had a lot of different parts in it compared to what we have today, so the designs are quite different, and I do quite like this one, but I also have this nostalgic love for the older version, which I do not own at the current time, but plan on picking up sometime in the near future. On the inside of the main box, we find this smaller white box, which features a drawing of the UCS Y-Wing. It's like an outline drawing. It looks very, very nice. It says, we are starting our attack run. That's the text on the top there. On the top of this box, you have some of the Y-Wings. This is very reminiscent of what we did receive with the UCS Millennium Falcon just last year. So this does seem like it's going to be a feature in future UCS sets as well, which I am very happy with. This is a very cool thing for LEGO to have the interior boxes with different art designs than the main box. I really like it. In the past, they actually had like plain white boxes with numbers on them. Now they add this extra little art. On the back side here, it just showed the underside of the Y-Wing with that same kind of outline drawing concept. And then we have another one of those Y-Wing with the thruster engines or whatever shooting out the back there. And on the underside, you just have the end of the Y-Wing's engine piece there, and that also extends on the right side of the box there as well. So, really like the way they've done the box art on the interior here, much like the Millennium Falcon. Obviously, you only get one box on the inside, unlike with the Millennium Falcon where they had four separate ones, but I still like it. Very awesome. Let's move on to the minifigs. Our first figure is Gold Leader, who is your typical Rebel Y-Wing pilot from LEGO. He's just got a little bit of a different print than we see on the other figures. The helmet, of course, being the major difference here, looks very good. You can see the back of the torso, very typical of LEGO from the Rebel pilots of the last five years or so. Underneath the helmet, you'll find that he does have the printed-on visor, as well as the same on the back here with a different facial expression. So you also get the microphone on there and a little chin strap. So quite a few little details on the Gold Leader pilot. Very nice minifigure, very much do enjoy getting an exclusive Rebel Pilot in this set. Of course, we also get the astromech droid named R2BHD. The one major qualm I have with this figure is the difference in color between the head and the torso. It's just like a slightly different silver. It's a little bit weird to me, but it is what it is. The torso and head prints are pretty much the same as all other astromech droids, just in a different color variation. As we look to the back, you'll find a blank slate, which is pretty typical of LEGO astromech droids. So it's nothing really special here with this particular R2 unit, just the one included with the Y wing i guess so that is our minifigure selection for the set not that great but not terrible of course the gold leader being the highlight figure the astromech droid not so much the first part of the Y-Wing we'll take a look at is this excellent cockpit that LEGO has put together. I very much do like the design of it. I like the bluish color they have. It's like a bluish gray that they have used. It's the same printed cockpit piece that we see on the Playscale Y-Wing fighter from Rogue One from 2017. It does have stickers on the side though to add a little bit of extra detail that the Playscale one does not have. The top of the cockpit or the surrounding area of it rather does have some stickers on it to add the yellow bits for detail. You can see them on the sides there. It's going to be the same on the flip side as well and on the front here you also do have these weapons on the front I'll show you the underneath in a minute, but I do want to get to the interior of the cockpit, which opens up just like that. You can see on the inside, there's a little control panel, and there's also a little thing for your pilot gold leader to hold. We have to remove or move up the range finder or target finder there so we can get our minifigure in. Also move up the steering column, and in there, you're going to find a tile where you can just place down gold leader. There are quite a few stickers in there for control panel details that do look very good. I do like them. I think LEGO did a good job with them. I was actually quite amazed with the one that goes directly onto the sloped piece and very much do enjoy the cockpit on this set. I think LEGO did a great job designing it. You can see the windows extend all the way to the back here so you get that extension and then even on the back side you can see there is that one by two translucent piece there so you have that complete 360 degree view for the pilot which is quite awesome. 
There's also the turret on top, which can spin 360 degrees. You can see it also spins this little thing here, which you can have used to spin as well if you want to use it to spin the turret like that. Although I find it to be a little bit more difficult than just spinning it like this. So it just depends on what you want to do. Usually you just spin it like this. I think this is just kind of for show. I'm not really sure. Like I said, the underbelly of the cockpit is quite amazing. They used a great technique to flip the bricks and have them basically face out on both the top and the bottom. So I very much do like the way they did that. Looks amazing. A great addition for a great UCS set. Really finishes it off down there on the bottom. To the body of the Y-Wing, you can see they've used quite a few different greebling techniques. There's also this big open rectangle where you can fit in your astromech droid. There's actually a couple of jumper tiles in there that he's going to fit right onto so he doesn't come flying out whenever you're moving the ship around, which is nice. So he does fit in there nice and snug he's not coming out no matter what unless you pull him out again the techniques on this are incredible it's a really fun build you'll find that some of this may be a little bit challenging when you get into getting all the little details you just have to kind of pay attention as you're building and it shouldn't be a big issue but if you're not paying attention you might miss some parts and then you have kind of a big issue so they made great use of a lot of the pole type pieces they look amazing they did a great job with the greebling and so many I mean so many different techniques that I couldn't even begin to name and there are just a ton of different pieces they use to kind of complete the look of the top of the Y-Wing here. It looks much better than the original version from 2004, and I really like what they have done. They used a lot of inverted techniques, lots of lots of different stuff. I mean, it's a really incredible building process, especially in this area, and then on the wings, or not the wings, but the engines as well. And on the rear of the center of the Y-Wing, there's even more detail here on the back, so these can pop out, although they're not really supposed to. They're supposed to stay like this, but that's just kind of how they use the technique they use to get it to look like that. Looks incredible. You see they even use the brown poles on the back here. Lots of these pole-type pieces in the set kind of the rods we used very very frequently throughout the set so you'll see those a lot in the building process and both in brown and in light gray you see those quite a bit looking towards the engines which are exactly the same on both sides obviously just mirrored they look amazing i think lego did a great job getting lots of little details they're made out of a couple of different bags throughout the set and you'll find that the building technique is a lot of fun you basically build the skeleton of it and then you fill it in with these extra little panels here so they have gotten a lot of lot of detail on there the engines even have little thrusters here in the back which I will show you have a pink translucent piece in there to kind of show that there is thrust which is very nice you'll also find that they've got so many little details around the engine as well and on the back here you'll find they have the little flaps just like this they're not really supposed to move but they are there on both sides on the back end of the y-wings engines very very nice looking and again on the other side you'll find that same little pink piece same little engine design the connection from the engine to the main section of the set is made with three technic rods and those actually fit in right like that it's very nice the way lego did it they actually built around that so it actually fits very snugly and you don't even know that connection is there unless you pull it out so it looks like it's all just one thing very, very nice the way LEGO did that, so very pleased with the way it connects up. You even have these pieces on the front, which are the piece, the part that I really dislike the most about these is just the way these uh, kind of go on, and they're a little bit finicky. They can slide left and right a little bit, so that's the, the heart. I don't even know what these are, but they're just kind of like extra little detail on there, accurate to the movie, obviously, but I just, I don't know. There's something about these that just kind of throws me off, because sometimes, you know, look, see, they're not kind of per perpendicular. I don't know. I'm being nitpicky with that one, but they are just kind of the most annoying part of the wiring, and I guess if that that's the most annoying part of the Y-Wing, then it's pretty damn good. On the underside of the Y-Wing, you'll find the landing gear and a ton of other little details. Like, Lego really added to the underside of this Y-Wing in quite a significant way. So many different little things. But the landing gear is found both underneath both engines, and you can just pull it out like this. Unfortunately, they're kind of both separate, so they kind of swing separately. You'll find this is a problem on all three of the landing gear pieces, but it will fold out like that. You can do the same on this left engine, and then the same in the front of the ship here. Although these ones are still separate, unfortunately, like they didn't, I think this could be easily solved by adding a one by two piece in between the two, just right underneath these. I don't know why they didn't do that to begin with, because it is kind of annoying to have these, you know, they're, they're just separate. It just doesn't make any sense. They could have very easily added a one by two piece so they wouldn't swing separately like they do. And that would really fix the main issue I have with them. But once you have them out, it does work very nicely. As you can tell, they give the Y-Wing a nice little lift off the ground. So if you want to use the landing gear, that's definitely a thing you can do, although it's not really required because the Y-Wing doesn't really break if you put it down on the ground without the landing gear. Like, it's not the biggest problem. You don't have to pull it out every time. Honestly, it's kind of a hassle to pull out because of the way they're separate, like I had mentioned. So I would definitely recommend if you're going to place it down, just place it down for a minute. You don't have to pull the landing gear out to place it down. If you're going to display it like this, though, definitely put the landing gear down. Otherwise, don't really worry about it.
And while the ship's on the ground, I'm going to give you a few more looks at these engines and the overall design of the Griebling and everything. Just so many different things to look at on this amazing Y-Wing model. So many little details and there's not a lot of features, obviously, because it is a UCS set and there's not really much you can do. The one thing I do find is lacking is there could be like a bombing system that would be nice. Like we've seen that in all the play Y-Wings, but it's not here in the main UCS Y-Wing. So obviously it's the Y-Wing bomber, so it makes sense if it could have bomb shop out the bottom, but unfortunately that is not a feature they were able to fit into this UCS model. The last feature of the Y-Wing we have to speak about is on the underbelly here, and it's this giant square. Well, not so giant, it's actually a two by two square, but this is where you're actually gonna be able to fit the stand, and that's how you're gonna get it onto the stand. So let's go ahead and show you how that works. It's pretty straightforward. If you own another LEGO Star Wars UCS set from like the last 10 years, you'll probably know how this works, but let's give it a go. To place the Y-Wing onto the stand, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to line up the square that I just showed you with the top of the stand there with the square that it has on top very nicely. It'll fall right on there and lean forward towards the front of the stand where the plaque is, which we'll take a look at in a moment. It's a little bit wobbly, but the stand itself is very sturdy. The Y-Wing on top, again, wobbly, but the stand is not going anywhere. So you don't have to worry about this thing falling over or anything, which is very nice. The stand itself is this nice black design that they've been using with the last few UCS sets or for quite a while now actually but it looks very nice it has the tiled off tops and you know uses the technic bits to create the stand with a little bit of tilt to it to make a nice displayable stand so very happy with the stand let's take a close look at the plaque and where you can put the minifigs this is based off the btl a4 y-wing starfighter and you can read off the information for yourself if you so choose maximum speed a thousand kilometers per hour that's pretty crazy anyway the two figures you can put the ashmark droid here on the left it's got two jumper plates there and the same for the regular rebel pilot or ghoul leader on the right there he's got two jumper plates that he can fit on as well so they go nicely to the left and the right of the plaque really like the way lego's displaying the minifigures on these sets so you can either have them in the set or you can have them on the plaque they've done this with quite a few ucs sets now and i really do like it so that's the plaque and the two minifigs that fit onto the plaque the instruction manual features the same exact art as the front of the box, which is no surprise. That's very typical for instruction manuals. You'll find the set number, lego.com, and everything. So very typical of a Lego instruction manual. On the inside, though, you'll find some information about the designers of the set, which is very fun to look through. You can, of course, pause the video, screenshot, and zoom in if you want to read any of the specifics. But there are just a lot of cool little details of them going through the design process and everything like that. It is also in multiple languages. So if you aren't particularly an English speaker and you want to read it in something like Spanish or another language, you definitely can do so. They even go through the graphic design processes. So very cool by Lego to give a lot of information into the insight of how they made this model. Of course, here we're getting into the other languages and such. So it's a very typical instruction manual from Lego. Nothing is a big surprise here. And we'll get to the back here. It'll show you the parts in used in the set. So very awesome instruction manual from Lego. And on the back, the typical win back end of it. It uses a very high quality binding as well, which is nice. So it's kind of squared off. Very much do like the instruction manual. Overall, I am very happy with the 2018 UCS Y-Wing. I find it to be a much needed upgrade to a very outdated UCS LEGO Star Wars set from 14 years ago now, which is pretty crazy. This thing is an amazing model and totally worth the $200 if you're willing to shell it out. Let me know in the comment section down below whether or not you'll be picking this one up or if you even think it's worth it. I think it totally is. Almost 2,000 pieces for $200 is definitely good on the price per piece factor. It's got an amazing displayability value. Not so much on the playability side, but that's not really what UCS sets are for. The two figures are pretty cool. I'm not a big fan of the Astromech droid, although Gold Leader is definitely a nice addition to your Rebel Pilot collection. If you did enjoy my review of this set, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, of course, subscribe. And if you have anything to say, leave in the comments section below. Thank you all for watching my review on the 2018 LEGO Star Wars UCS Y-Wing set number 75181, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.